Hello everyone, this is Peak Entertainment and we are back again. I'm going to talk about tennis now and the recent news that was released a couple of hours ago that the world number one player Novak Djokovic had tested positive for coronavirus. This was alongside other players such as Grigor Dimitrov, Bernard Koric and Viktor Trujki. His wife Djokovic, Elena Djokovic, had also contracted the disease and this was released shortly after their participation in the exhibition tournament known as the Adria Tour. This had been organised by Djokovic initially and had taken place in Serbia and Croatia and you had prolific players as Grigor Dimitrov, Alexander Zverev, Dominic Thiem who all participated in the role. Now when this was announced this was stated as an unofficial charity event and it was meant to be staged over five different countries and it was played on clay and the intention was that there to raise funds for up and coming tennis players and they also wanted to prove that tennis could come back from this coronavirus crisis that we found ourselves in we've seen the major grand slam tournaments such as the french open which was first postponed and then pushed back to september we've also seen the likes of wimbledon be completely cancelled for the first time ever in its history and Prior to recent weeks, there was ongoing doubts on whether the US Open would actually take place. So this tournament, I think, was staged to really show a positive aspect of tennis and that the sport could pull together and everybody could show a united front and provide a more hopeful picture for the sport going forward. Now, unfortunately, that hasn't proved to be the case with these positive tests for the players. It's actually put the sport under huge scrutiny and the negative lights on here so we're going to look at the particular aspects and i'm going to be as fair-minded as i can on here because i've seen a lot of criticism online and on twitter and various sport at articles some of the criticism i do believe is justified summer has been a bit over the top a lot of it has been single directly towards novak Djokovic, and he's going to get that criticism because he was the head organization of the tournament but we have to realize there were other people also involved so when the tournament was staged you know it was a very startling amongst a lot of sports fans because there seemed to be a real disdain in terms of social distancing and testing protocols if you go on lawn and if you watch this the tournament live you would see that there were huge crowds congregating together seemingly not adhering to any kind of one meter rule or two meter rule and i think primarily that was because in serbia they had one of the few or less cases and death tolls within the world they had around 12,000 cases i believe of the virus with only 252 deaths now of course we don't want anybody to die but if you look in comparison to various other countries particularly the uk and us that's a very minor kind of comparative scale so they probably looked at those results and probably felt that it was very safe or safer to participate in this tournament where you could have crowds joining in and people closer together and we saw various kind of scenes where the players were involved in a basketball game during this tournament and there are other scenes where we saw them involved in partying and clubs you know with large crowds and you can go on twitter you can see where the players are celebrating and dancing and partying away on their shirts off and everything in you know the disco everything involved on here so there was very much almost an ignorance if you want to put it that way of the virus itself they just seemed as if they wanted to get back to normal now we can look at this on a couple of fronts here in terms of the distance in itself, you have to remember that despite the fact that Serbia may have had the least cases, that's not the point. The point is you've staged a tournament where you've invited people, players coming over from all different countries, which have all had different reactions to the virus, who have all had different death tolls or infection rates to the virus itself not every country has had the same now if you had a scenario where all countries had a very low amount of uh, infection rate and a low death toll then maybe you could excuse it a bit more but this is the whole point of people wanting to keep the social distancing within sports with many events playing behind closed doors because you just never know when you're inviting multiple people from different nations from different countries congregating in the same amount of space over a number of weeks you never know what kind of results you're going to get so this is why we've seen most recently in terms of the football and 
recently with the UK and Germany and Italy and Spain where they've chosen to have all the defense and game stage behind closed doors now we can look at tennis and we can say if you look at the facet of the game and the way that it's set up it should be really one of the easiest and most safest socially distancing sports around right because the players are across the net from one another so there's your one meter or your two meter roll covered there the umpire sits high up on the chair so he's away from the players the linesmen are at the edge of the court so okay you might get the offication where the player runs deep and he might collide into one of them but in general they're at a safer distance from the players themselves so it's only really the ball kids who would come into close contact with the players so you could argue you could remedy this by having masks and gloves and of course the players would have to towel themselves down so tennis really is one of those fewer sports that could have easily played behind closed doors but they chose not to now we could go into another argument here that they chose not to not primarily because of only health concerns but because it would probably be financially detrimental to them to put on these events without the income and revenue of the gate and the crowds right because they would lose out on all that money and with it, any sport you know it's a huge cost to put on these events and pay for all the ground staff and all the electricity and the promotion etc etc so it's a huge cost for these guys and they're reliant very much on that crowd money so if you don't have that crowd money it's very difficult to put on these events now I'm not out and out saying that these guys that stage these events were just purely greedy and looking out for money but you do have to question in this current climate that they're in that there was no kind of consideration at all it seems to stage these events behind closed doors which I think it should have been you know you could have primarily have people view the games you know at certain sports bars and other public facilities well away from the grounds so you could have had crowdfunding schemes set up where people can make donations or like you know anything to kind of raise money in any other way without crowds congregating in large areas together in dense population spaces you could have easily done that but they chose not to so i think that's a real lack of care and negligence and irresponsibility across the whole board and that's going to be my second point because i've seen a lot of criticism aimed towards Djokovic and yeah you could argue he deserves a lot of that because he was the spearheader of this tournament he was the front runner he was kind of the face and the figurehead for this tournament you know and his status as the number one player he would have used that a lot to promote the event okay so yes he does have to come in for some criticism for staging this tournament but he wasn't the only one there. You know, what about the other players? You know, Djokovic wasn't the only person that played in this tournament. What about the other players and their agents and their coaches and their trainers who all approved for these other players to come from these other countries? Remember, it's not as if they were all based in Serbia. This wasn't a home tournament. You had players coming across from all different various countries all over the world wanting to participate in this tournament. So they too have to be held accountable because they've helped participate in this event, as is the organisations and all the other sponsors and the television broadcasters even, you know, they have all contributed to this event taking place and they all would have had the knowledge of this event taking place with very low social distancing and testing protocols and also what about the government officials because at the end of the day despite his status as Serbia's top sportsman Djokovic is only one man you know he's not the president of the United States okay at the end of the day he could only promote what he's been allowed to promote you know the final say in terms of staging this event would have been on the the country's government you know if we look at the uk wimbledon got cancelled it's not as if andy murray could go to the london government and request for wimbledon to be reopened with all the crowds turning up the the government wouldn't even entertain that idea at all okay so the government as well they do have to take responsibility because it was ultimately them that green the idea to stage this tournament so whilst Djokovic should have a lot of criticism I can understand that he's not the only one at fault here you know there's other people that have to be held accountable in terms of this event and what's happened so if we look at other aspects and in particular now 
the impression of the game. So I've talked about now the responsibility with Djokovic and the government officials and everybody who participated. So from a health point of view, yeah, it's been a huge impact and it's very irresponsible. But also from the impression of tennis itself. I mentioned before, we've had various other sports that have had the same kind of impact on them that tennis has had they've all been brought to a standstill i mentioned a lot the football season rugby basketball boxing you know they've all been caught to a standstill they're all very reliant on crowds turning up tv deals sponsorships so all of these sports are coming back now in a very limited staggered capacity and they've all had to adhere to the social distancing by not having the crowds there but then you put on a tennis event which breaks all of that so tennis looks bad because it's tennis saying that whilst other sports are being very careful and sticking to these kind of rules and regulations in terms of their safety from the virus tennis has less of a disregard does tennis see itself above these relegations where it sees itself it doesn't have to stick to these rules at the same way that other sports do it can kind of do what it wants it doesn't have to share a kind of responsibility and care about people's health but other sports do do you see what I'm saying? Now, I know that probably wasn't their intention, but that's the impression it gives within the sport, that tennis either was very arrogant or complacent or very negligent for not sticking to these rules while other sports were. You see, this is a whole kind of global picture, a much more bigger scale issue that you have to look at here. At the end of the day, you know, other sports stuck to the rules and have put on a very big effort carry on but at the same time ensure that people are kept at certain safe distances and testing protocols have been in place and i think tennis this event in particular should have stuck to the same kind of standard and it hasn't so it's going to look bad in a comparative light okay we also then have to look at the issue of the fact that tennis was looking to bounce back they were looking to come back i think around august they recently announced that the us open was still going to go ahead in august time and the french open as far as i know has still been slated to be participated in within september so tennis was look, slowly looking to work its way back into play but now we've had this you know big event come on out here where the whole sport and what it's looking at it's going to have a very much of a negative effect because you're going to have a lot of people a lot of players who are going to look at this and are going to be even more circumspect about coming back to the game. Now, of course, they've been out for months now and while they still train, yes, they've been out of practice and they want to get back. They want to get back into the sport they've been involved with their whole career. But they're going to look at this tournament and are going to see players contracting the disease or the virus rather and they're going to have second thoughts about it. They're going to have second thoughts about coming back or rather they're going to have second thoughts about taking part in tournament that involves Novak Djokovic, that involves Grigor Dimitrov or Victor Trochki or Bernard Koric, right? They're always going to people give a second look at these people and think, well, you had the virus, you were very irresponsible. Do I feel safe in taking part in a tournament that you're involved in? And I think the ATP has to take this into serious consideration. Now, we all know that tennis players are very healthy and a lot of players are in their early 20s, late 20s, early 30s. And of course, they're going to have access to the best kind of medical equipment. But again, the whole issue with this coronavirus is that we can't really predict how it's going to react, how it's going to take shape or take form within the next upcoming month. You know, the general rule was that older people tend to contract it with weaker immune systems. But, you know, still it's still open to anybody. You know, this is a virus that isn't going to go away. Right. It's still very prominent and a huge concern on a global scale. So how are tennis players who haven't contracted disease going to feel about going to a tournament with other players that have? You know, there's a lot of potential disharmony that could be created within the game here. So I think they have to be very careful now about the decisions they're going to make going forward in terms of whether they want to put these tournaments um, and schedule them ahead. I think now, if there wasn't any any lingering doubt, I think this event has confirmed that now you cannot have any event with large crowds at all. I think this event has largely confirmed that. I don't think they were planning to anyway, but this event has really confirmed it now that you just cannot have these large-scale tennis tournaments that take place over two weeks 
with thousands of people congregating together in large spaces you you know you just cannot you just it's too much of a risk and i think what's happened is this event has really hit home and i i don't expect the us open or the french open if they still happen to be played with any kind of crowds at all and to further on that point you know there is a possibility now that tennis could seriously be cancelled for the rest of the year when i initially saw this news break out that was my first initial thoughts i thought that this would kind of put a lot of organizers off in terms of putting on these tournaments first from a safety point of view but second of all from a financial point of view because this tournament has really highlighted the fact that you cannot have crowds at these stadiums so what's going to happen now are we then to say now that tennis is going to be cancelled for the rest of the year and we're just going to have to wait to the following year before we can kind of get the sport back on its feet i think that's a genuine possibility now i haven't heard anything more about any potential cancellations for the tournaments they wouldn't make those announcements yet anyway i think they just want to deal with this issue right now um Djokovic I think flew back to his home country he wasn't tested on site I think he got on a plane straight away to be tested back in his home country but we would wait to see a statement from him first I think he's kind of hasn't come out of a statement yet because as a the organizer of this tournament he really needs to make sure that whatever statement he puts out is very clear and, and concise rather and very sincere in it you know very apologetic like on here and it's going to be quite a big statement it can't be a simply i'm sorry for this happening and that's it you know he's going to have to cover quite a lot of ground in his statement and also what will happen with Djokovic in terms of his status he if as we all know he is the president of the atp council now i've seen a lot of comments on forums saying that he should be suspended or even he should resign from his position as the president of the atp players council you know following this and to be honest i can understand that viewpoint you know i wouldn't be surprised if he offered up his resignation from the council when he releases his statement that would kind of be a good sincere gesture because you have to admit that Djokovic's reputation is under the microscope at the moment you know people always comment he hasn't had the same kind of adulation and adoration that both Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal have had but this won't do any help to his cause you know so I think he's gonna have to think about a statement that he makes and any other following gesture and I think a huge statement followed by his resignation from the council would go some way to kind of rebuilding his trust or his status if you like with the media and fans like so that's what i would expect to see i think the grand slams the us open the french open will probably still go ahead but if they are it's going to be behind closed doors um again we have to wait and see a lot of what other players react maybe not so on this issue i know recently british players such as dan evans and andy murray have come out with some statements on here but i think general players tend not to condemn other players publicly you know in terms of media statements or twitter etc so what i'm more interested in what the players are going to feel about coming back to the tour and coming back to the grandstand tournaments that's the big issue our players going to kind of unite together and say nope it's not worth it let's just stay as we are and basically none and void the rest of the season and then we we can hopefully come back next season where things have died down a bit more i wouldn't be surprised if i saw that development either because you're not going to get every player want to participate you're definitely not so it'll be interesting to see what happens here but those are my overall thoughts on the recent announcements of Djokovic testing positive for this virus and the overall impact that it could have on the tennis season going forward but let me know what you think in the comments below do you think Djokovic should be held accountable more solely or are you like me and think he's not the only one that should be held responsible there's a lot more of a group kind of factor here involved and that more people should be held accountable just like Djokovic do you think the tennis season should be finished now do you think it's safe to keep continuing with the US Open and the French Open or do you think it's this event here has taken it to the point now where yeah we should just end the season now and continue with it next year so those are my thoughts for now take care of yourselves stay at safe distances and I will see you very very soon